Hi everybody, welcome back to another CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison and today we'll be looking at Bitcoin. What's happened to Bitcoin? Price of Bitcoin is shot down just now. Is it a bad thing? Is it a good thing? Is there some positives in the market just now? So we'll look at that. We'll look at the kind of Bitcoin chart as well. We'll look at the small caps. Small caps are actually doing okay. A lot of people think um, that the whole market is going down, but it's not the case um, just now. If you look on Binance at the moment, and um, you'll see a lot of the kind of small caps are really kind of going for it just now. And we'll look at um, other things as well, other kind of news headlines as well. Probably not, and we'll have time for the news. I won't be on long today again. But, um, or my usual one hour, I won't be on my usual one hour. Um, but I'll just see if we're live or not. I don't expect a lot of people to be in when Bitcoin price shoots down like this. <coughs> you usually don't get a lot of people in. So I'll just check to see if we're live. And drink. Um, are we live? Yeah, we've got a couple of people in, so I'll just dive over to the chat area. <coughs> Excuse me. And see who's in the house. We've got Michael Harris is in the house. Welcome to you. Chris Camus has joined us. Mike has joined us as well from sunny Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Looking forward to coming back to UK for a cold Christmas. I uh, love, love Christmas in the, uh, in the winter. Brilliant. So, Chia Engov. Uh, is in the house. Mark Pollan is in the house as well. Welcome to you. So as I said, we've not got a lot of people in. We'll probably get a few more people coming in um, later on, but not got a lot of people in just now. That's cool. That's cool. Totally understand that sentiment is really, really low just now in the cryptocurrency market and understand that more and more people are just going to um, fade away. Uh, but they'll come back again uh, once everything kind of settles down. So we want to look at that. We want to ask the question, is this really kind of going to fall to 4,000 or 3,000 or 2,000. Okay, so we'll just look at the markets just now, see what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. I shouldn't eat cheese before I come on. Right, we have an overall market capitalization of $207 billion. Big, big difference from where it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, Bitcoin dominance, 66.2%. And see who Bitcoin itself, 7,593. It did get down to 7,400. Good thing. That is a good thing that's bounced from there. And I'll show you the chart in a, a couple of minutes as well, why, why that is a good thing. But we'll look to see who's done well. Coins have done well. There's about three three that are just kind of stable coins. So we won't include them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven that are in the green, even just. Some of them are just in the green. MMO coin up 104% on 77 million market cap and it's not got for some reason. I'll just go back to that. It's not got the how much it's done. The volume, yeah, the volume is rubbish. That's what I was kind of looking at. Um, so the volume is not good on MMO coin at all, 15,000, so I wouldn't kind of pay too much heed to that. Um, I don't know how that's getting in there. Um, Molecular Future is up 41%, Digitex Futures is doing well, 11.31%. Just now we go to BTC, Satoshi value, kind of much the same um, for the top 100. Um, we've got Digitex Futures, 784, now that's good. Um, Molecular Future, 12,252. And MMO coin, 16,000. Yep, 16,977. But as I said, I would kind of discount that. I don't think that's something not quite right there. Celia is up as well. But there's only a couple up in the top 100. However, however, if we go over to, say, the top 500, so we'll just go over to next. If, we do, if you click on, if you're going to be doing this alongside me as well, if you click on next 100, and um, you'll get to page two. And if we go to BTC, Satoshi value, you can see the lower caps are doing much better in terms of kind of going up. EXMR is up 97%. Enigma is up 25%. Mainframe, 19%. Elrond is up 13%. This is Satoshi value, um, remember as well. If we put it back to USD, not got that much. That's purely because Bitcoin has gone down um, so much and everything hinges on the kind of dollar value, the dollar value of the kind of alts and John, the, the kind of dollar value of Bitcoin as well. But if we put it into Satoshi value, much, much better. 
this is the thing we're looking for. If you believe that Bitcoin is going to go up to $100,000 in, in the next three, four years, you should be looking at Satoshi value, unless you're short-term trading. Um, and even then, you're still looking to accumulate Bitcoin, so it doesn't really matter. And people still get a little confused with that. But if we go to the next 100, this is um, BTC value again, and this is a top uh, in Satoshi value. Everest, Maximine, Envion, First Coin, Playchip, Mex, C Coin, Storm, um, Micro Bitcoin, all up in double digit greens. There's loads of them up in the double digit greens. This is the smaller caps. We go to USD value again. See, it's getting there's more numbers there and there's bigger numbers there for even the, the dollar value going up as well. And that's going from, we'll just see, market cap of 289 million down to 9 million or 10 million. The next 100 on page 4 uh, is going from 301 to 400. And um, we'll go to the change. Self key, we've seen big, huge jump. We've seen that in Binance, 99%. It's gone up more than that, but it's coming back down again. It was up to about 70 odd. Um, so it nearly went up 200%. Nucleus Vision is going up as well. Uh, that's N Cash up 30% just now. Video is up. Um, Bozagora is up. OVC, um, OV Code is up as well. Go Chain is up as well. So there's loads of them. The small caps, much better um, than. Uh, so I was going to originally say it was the altcoins that were going up, but it's not. It's the small caps that are actually going up. And if we put that in USD, you can see it still looks okay 87%, 23%, 19, 11, 9.77. And the market cap is from 9 million down to 5 million, 5.5 million. Next 100 we're looking at, and we'll go to BTC value. And we've got about 40, 50% in the green. If we go to USD value, that changes it, obviously, but we've still got a couple of big ones there as well that are going up. And that goes all the way down to about 3 million market cap. And one last page. Oh, that was the last page I was going to show you, page 5. Down to 3 million market cap. But there's other ones out there and that are going much higher as well. So the small caps are doing okay. Um, not necessarily the altcoins, the small caps. Obviously all small caps are altcoins, but not all altcoins are small caps. So that's why I kind of changed the heading there to small caps that are doing well. Uh, if we look on Binance at the moment, we can see Key is up there 50%. It's coming right down again, obviously. Don't know if that was a pump and dump, but if you were in that, it did get up to 78 Satoshi. So big, huge jump. Um, Cocos is up 27%. Um, Enigma, Go, Encash, MFT, ERD, all doing well just now. Um, Vib. XTZ is doing well at the moment as well. Another small cap is the one I was been talking about for, <laughs> for a couple of weeks. Um, well, really a couple of days. I kind of mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, first of all. Um, but with Shearing. Shearing has jumped up. It's come back down again just now. So a good opportunity to get back in, possibly. But I recommended it. I, written the report, I wrote the report. Um, I recommended it 31 Satoshi. I think it was about 31 Satoshi. And it's jumped up last night, went up to 70 as well, and then came back. It's nothing to do with the report I've written or me kind of putting it out there. It's just because because it's just such a good project and the, there's other things kind of going on in the background as well, a couple of announcements as well. But they've done brilliantly. They're in 59, 60, so 60 Satoshi at the moment. Uh, and it's still a small uh, market cap just now. In fact, I'm just going to find out what the market cap is at the moment. I'll just do that here. So we're going to times it by 1.97 billion. So star, we'll just do 2 billion just to round up. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2 billion. So the market cap now is 9 million for sharing. $9 million for sharing. Uh, and I still see this doing extremely well. We'll just go to the weekly on this. And this is just since it came on Bitmart. Um, obviously, the ICO price was around 400 Satoshi. 
but this is just since it came on Bitmark. The high price is 164. Um, and I think we're looking at that. We're looking at about 77 for the next leg up. A wee bit come back down, then the next leg up, leg up to about 114, 115 for shearing. I think it could easily do that. So I just managed to get in. I sold my hot yesterday and managed to get into shearing at 40 Satoshi. So it's up 50% already, which is good, but I'm holding on um, because this is a, a short, long, well, short, medium, and long term hold um, as well. And um, we just jump back to Crypto Bubbles. Um, what's happening there? This is over the last hour, and this is in USD, so it's coming back up again. This is because Bitcoin prices came back up from about 7,400, which we'll look at, to 7,600, roundabout ish. Um, so this is why it's all in green at the moment. If we go to Satoshi value, much, much the same. Much the same. If we go to the 24 hour level, this is in Satoshi value as well. You can see it's not actually that bad, it's quite good. But if we go to USD, you can see it changes big time to red, apart from molecular future. Fear and Greed Index, we are at 20, extreme fear. This is good, this is good. This is what a lot of the um, kind of people are they're just fearing and the sentiment towards Bitcoin is really, really low just now. It's not as low as it could have been um, or it could go to. It's been down to, I think, around about five before. Yeah, where, where was it? Yeah, there, five, August the 22nd. And where was the price? I don't know where the price was on August the 22nd, but we were at extreme fear on August the 22nd this year. And we're getting close to those levels again. And to me, that is a good sign. That's when to look at the markets and say, okay, time to start looking at this because everybody is just selling their Bitcoin or everybody is just getting out of the market. Um, and that's the time to look at going back in, obviously with some due diligence. And um, we'll look at the Tide.io. And this is a sentiment score across... Um, a lot of them. I finally managed to um, kind of register here. It wouldn't let me register for some reason, but I finally managed to register and you can get more things when you register as well. Um, Bitcoin down to 32.56, Ethereum 31. Everybody's, all the big the big ones are kind of all kind of in the 30s just now. XRP's gone up a wee bit uh, to 37.47. We'll look at the top 10 highest sentiment. Nope, this will come up. That's not coming up. We'll just go to coins. And we'll look at the high sentiment from there. So we've got skip. Digix Dow um, is up. Obviously, when Bitcoin goes um, down big time, Digix Dow always goes up for some reason. So but it's actually down 4.08%, but the daily sentiment is really high on that. Relative trading volume is really high as well. So we can expect the price to go up on that. Storm has gone up. Um, sentiment is high. Relative trading volume is 250% up on its average 30-day um, trading volume, which is good. What else is doing well? Tron. Tron is up on the daily sentiment as well, um, but it's down in price at the moment. That's USD value that's down in. And um, we'll just look at, see, can I change that? Price BTC. Uh, it doesn't give me the 24 hour change in BTC. What else is doing well? UBQ, that's one that's been out for a couple of years. Previously traded in that as well. Funfair, doing okay as well, 43 sats. So, Digix down might be a good one to look at just now. It's still down just now, so it might be a good one to get into at the moment if the um, Bitcoin price still goes down. Then we'll look at that a wee bit in a second. Now just go back to chat area, see who else has joined us. If anybody, um, Goddy Boy, I don't know if I've mentioned it before. Goddy Boy is in, Mervyn Skidmore, as I said. Mark Ennis has joined us, good to see you here. Honest Crypto Journey is in as well. A wee bit earlier, mate, good to see you, mate. Um, we've got Marcus Jafari is in, um, who else? Stephen King, 
Chris from Edinburgh is in as well. RC the Hawthorns is in, Mitch Deiter. Um, Danny Pop is in the house. You think Bitcoin is going to bounce? Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> but we'll look at the chart in a second. Crypto Dread is in the house as well, and the Revolutionists is in the house as well. Um, when choose my ADA is being crushed. We'll get. We'll have a look at the charts just now. Okay, so what's happening with Bitcoin? Okay, so I've given you those three lines over the last um, couple of weeks about uh, kind of Bitcoin price and talking about the Bitcoin price. And um, we said, okay, if it breaks 8,600, it knocked on the door a few times. If it breaks that, we're going down to 8,000. It went down to 8,000 and knocked on the door a few times. And usually when it knocks on the door of a particular price, um, more than kind of three times, it will break below that. Um, if it's trying to break um, below, if it's trying to break to the upside, it usually breaks above it, if it as well if it knocks on um, the door or to the upside. Um, but now we're at the stage of 7,400. I drew this line here and said that's the next stage we're going to. And that's the next strong support there. Um, and we've got support here and we're all the way back to kind of May. This is where the support is. It's knocked on the door now a couple of times. So we've got a potential bullish pattern here. So we've got a double bottom here um, on the daily. So it kind of knocked on the door here on the 25th of October and then it came down again, but it's done it a couple of times now. This is it's kind of it could be bullish, um, but it could be um, very bearish as well. So we need a bounce from here. If it's going to, if it's going to do anything, we need a bounce from these levels. It touched it 7,400, touched it and bounced back up again. So it's done that once, it's up to 7,555. Um, now resistance is going to be 8,000. That's going to be resistance. It was previous support, but it's going to be resistance from here on in. So we need it to break $8,000 if we're going to see any kind of upside momentum here. However, we have to kind of look at this objectively and say this could go down further. And when it breaks 7,400, we're kind of in a free fall after that. I'm going to put on the VPVR. I'm going to move over here. So if we break 7,400, we're kind of in a free fall up to down to about 5,200. Look in the VPVR. This is a volume and kind of relative and kind of trading as well, where it's been traded, the price the price points where it's traded most. And you can see with the little bars, this is where it's not really much traded, so it's kind of no man's land. So it just falls to the next level of major buying um, and selling, which is 5,200. We need to hold this 7,400. If we don't, then Bitcoin could potentially go down to around about the 5,200 level. Is that a bad thing as well? Not so much. Not so much. We've, we've had these ups and downs before. We should be used to it by now. It's a case of if it does do that, then it's a case of probably just saying, OK, time to walk away for a couple of weeks and just not panic about it, not look at the charts every day, not um, panic sell, just to walk away. That's probably the best thing to do, um, just to walk away. Or you could see it as an opportunity for possibly buying more and accumulating more Bitcoin. That's how I would be looking at it. Obviously, I'll be in it and looking at it every day because I report to you every day. But we need to hold this, but we have to be objective as well. And this is one kind of bullish scenario here. We've got the double bottom here and hopefully we bounce up from here. So that to me is bullish. And I'm not a perma bull. I kind of, well, I kind of go towards the kind of more positive side of things. It's just me in general and life uh, in general as well. But we have to be objective as well and say this could fall. And if it does fall, it could, goodness knows where it's going to stop. Probably the next stop stop level is going to be about $6,000 because that's a psychological barrier. Um, so $6,000 would be the next level, I would say. Don't put it at $6,000. Oh, don't want that. Uh, so put it here. Horizontal line at 6000 Settings. I know this doesn't matter. You're not really going to see it, but okay. So that's six thousand dollars. So if we break seven thousand four hundred, 
and close on the daily below that, then we're, we're looking at $6,000 and below that. 7,000 is a psychological barrier as well, but a major psychological barrier and TA point of view, we're looking at $6,000 and then on down to $5,200 if it goes below 6,000. So we have to prepare ourselves for it. I'm not being kind of bearish on it. Well, obviously I am, the, the charts look bearish, um, but um, I'm not having a downer on Bitcoin. I just think we have to prepare for that. So winter is coming again. <laughs> but that's good. That's good because there are still opportunities out there as well. When this happens, a lot of people abandon the good projects as well. So they just panic sell, panic sell everything and the good projects will go down with it. And that's when you say, okay, now is the time to kind of swoop in and pick up some more. But as we've seen as well, it's not affecting the markets that much. Well, it's not affecting Binance, the altcoins at the moment. Um, but if you're to look at the charts for the altcoins as well, this is the chart um, for the altcoins. This is without Bitcoin, but this is a dollar value as well. We always have to remember that we've got an M going on here. Usually when we've got an M going on here, we're going to go down further um, for the alts. But if we're looking at it, there's a lot of opportunities in the market to kind of go up as well. But with this kind of M going on here, and I'll show you what I mean. Usually when we've got an M, and that's a kind of funny M. We'll just delete that one. It's got to stop by my computer. Got an M going on here. It usually kind of goes down. If we've got a W, and that's when we see a kind of reverse of that and it goes up. So that's what it looks like just now, but you can see from um, the likes of, we'll look at KuCoin as well. We've looked at Binance, we'll look at KuCoin. We've got KuCoin open already. I thought I had it there, I've got it open already. Markets, I've got a couple hundred dollars in KuCoin at the moment. Spot and that's just ad bank. I've told you about that already. I've had it since ICO <laughs> when it was about ten thousand dollars, now down to two hundred dollars. So I'm just keeping it, there's no point in selling it, right? So, KuCoin Plus, we've got Tezos up 10 percent, that's KuCoin Plus, and we've got Key up obviously 57 percent. What's the volume? Um, 5.32 Bitcoin, that's on KuCoin, Fota. Is that this one I've looked at as well in the past? Pal, Roby, TFD. What's the volume on that? So there's still not volume, but there's still some brilliant projects on KuCoin. Still highly recommend it for picking up some good projects. So we can see there's still opportunities. That there's always opportunities. Um, even if it, there's always opportunities because if you're um, selling short as well. And there's good, that's that's an opportunity. I tend not to do it and um, go short. Um, but there's opportunities there. If you're a trader, you should be going short and long as well. You should have that objectivity. Um, but I'm trading in the kind of altcoins as well, and they don't give me an opportunity to short and go. They only give me a chance to go long to buy, because not everything you can you can't short everything. Um, all the alts. It's only with a few alts that you can short if you're going to do it. Obviously, Bitcoin you can short as well and the likes of Bybit. So that's that at the moment. Um, if there's any charts you want me to look at, give me a shout and put it in the chat area and I'll look at the charts. Chris Camus is saying, when Lambo? Chris Camus, Justin Sun also tweeted about share rings, so a lot more exposed now. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen this. I don't want to go too much on about this. I don't want to show it. Um, Justin Sun. But um, where did I see it? I don't know where it was. Yeah, so Sharing put out, we're going to integrate one coin to our accepted list of payments into the Sharing's global app. So they've not out brought out the app yet. So they've not even got an app and they're going up in price like that as well. But the potential is huge. If you've not read the report yet, read the report I'd written on um, kind of sharing and just look into it for yourself as well and join the groups and that. 
brilliant group of people. Um, so you can pay for flights, hotels, car rentals, tours, and EVOA applications with the token of your choice. And there's a vote here currently going on just now. Who's winning the vote just now? Tron. Tron is winning the vote because Justin's son had kind of tweeted this out as well, um, which is good exposure for sharing. So obviously one of the reasons this went up. But Tron is up there in the lead just now. VeChain was leading. And there's been 5,243 votes. Nano, don't think it's going to make it. Lastos is not going to make it either. So it looks as if it's going to be Tron uh, leading the way. So that was quite cool, actually. Um, Bernard Dronald is in the house. Tim Gash is back with us. Crypto Don Juan has joined us. I'm still short. You did see a couple of, I think it was last month, you did say it was going to go down to $7,000 and you said you were short, so well done at you, mate. Um, Chris Camus, yeah, totally agree. Honest Crypto Johnny, thanks for replying to my comment on your video. I missed that one. And today should be called Red Friday instead of Black Friday. I'm personally waiting for Green Friday. Yeah, that'll be great. Uh, Mark Kinnis, Tim, hi, mate. Uh, Michael Harris, please don't chill. No, no, definitely not, not chilling, but just making you aware of a good project. Is that showing? I don't know. Um, Michael Harris, sharing has for years been a cash flow positive business. That's a big difference. And that was a big difference I seen with sharing as well. Um, it's cash flow positive. Not a lot of people are making money in the crypto projects. I've looked at that. Um, the kind of ICO stage of crypto projects when they were coming out was just ideas. And a lot of them are still just ideas. They've not done anything. They've not got product out yet. They've not got licenses yet and stuff like that. It's still an idea. Um, but with sharing, it's totally different. They're actually making money, They've made partnerships, uh, making money as well and potential to make a load of money. So I kind of see this as a kind of hybrid now between between traditional business and kind of blockchain business. There's got to be a hybrid kind of model where you've got to look at, okay, are they actually making money? And look at the price to earnings ratio. If we could do something like that, I know there is kind of something like that in crypto as well. But if we could get something like that as well, you'd probably find the price to earnings ratio is extremely, extremely low just now on a lot of the projects are probably negative. Um, but uh, we need to kind of look at the traditional side and the blockchain side of it as well. And with sharing, um, they would have a high um, PE um, as well. So um, I'll definitely look at them, look into them. But there's loads of opportunities out there. I'm looking at a couple of other ones. Um, as well, but they probably won't be talking about them till next month. Um, I'm thinking about setting something up, talking to a few people just now, um, whereby I can do a marketing package or something and just kind of do detailed reports, but do it on our terms. So the people I'm talking to will do it on our terms, will go to projects that we actually like. So I went to a kind of approach sharing and said, I really like what you're doing. Um, would you mind if I kind of wrote, or would you pay for it if I kind of wrote a report, done a video on, kind of um, featured you? And they've come back and said no at the moment, but that's cool. That's cool because I've got into it. I've um, got into it as an investor. So I'm going to make the money that way as well in the future. But for other projects as well, I think a lot of projects will say yes to this kind of marketing package. It's a hidden gem marketing package, we're going to call it. Um, so I'm speaking, I'm just at the kind of beginning stages of that just now. I'm looking forward to doing that because I love doing the research for it, although it takes ages and it's a kind of pain in the arse sometimes. Um, I love doing that. So I'm speaking to a few people about that just now, just see if we can get out of the ground and see what happens. Okay, what are some of Tim Gash? I'm back in XRP from USDT now. I've never seen XRP at 23 cents, so it seems like an amazing price to get back in. Excellent. Um, I think XRP is still going to do well. I've been saying it for ages. I don't know how many times I can say it, but it's going to go, it's going to go mental soon. You always told us Steve to look at projects that have a real use case. Thanks, Marcus. Yes, and thank you um, for putting me on to um, sharing as well. You told me about it ages ago, um, and I didn't get into it then purely it was just for funds, and I didn't have any money <laughs> until the other day as well. But when I was writing the report, I formed in. Um, because of the, the research I was doing, I thought, holy shit, this could be amazing. And it's turned out to be pretty amazing just now. It's down to 55 just now. That's cool. Totally cool. Down to 55. It needs a little correction. It did jump up to 70. But it's down to 55, 56 at the minute. 
um, and that's perfectly natural so not worried about that at all we're thinking longer term here and uh, much longer term but still up 44 percent over the last 24 hours can you look at CRO please yep um but I told Mark about it LOL Michael Harris ah did you was it you that told Mark excellent right um CRO so where are we just now with Bitcoin 7501 so it's coming back down again yeah not looking good at the moment and needs to hold that 7400 or it's not going to be a good weekend if it doesn't 7493 was still falling let's go to the hourly chart Yeah, we need to bounce from here. Okay, CRO. Ah, that's on the hourly. We'll look on the daily just to get a bigger picture. It's dancing with the 50 EMA just now. It's at its all time or close to its all time low. That's the right one. Yeah, crypto.com CRO one. Yep. Um, 328 was its all time or 340. That's all time low. So to me, these kind of projects are not projects. This is like the, the gas for crypto.com. Uh, this kind of TA makes me um, look at it and think this could be a really good one because it's coming off its all time low. And uh, you look at the potential for it, see what its all time high is. It, it doesn't really mean anything when you kind of look at the all time high, to be honest. It could just be back in the day, that's what it was. And that's what it seems to be here. But I still like seeing the all-time lows and it just coming back up from its all-time lows. It's not really crossed over the 50 EMA yet. It's tried it a few times. Kind of crossed over there. Didn't really. It did cross over here at 411, but came back down again. So I would probably, if you're looking for an entry point, I wouldn't be going in just now. I'd be waiting, obviously, with the Bitcoin price going down. A lot of the also are going to come down as well. So I'd be waiting for a good entry point for that. Um, good entry point being if it kind of goes back up from here um, <clears throat> where would be the kind of support level for this round about 386 um, Satoshi for the support level for it so um, for an entry point um, no I wouldn't get in just now if you're in it just now I wouldn't be too concerned unless it go down to 335 and below because that's be the all time low and it's got support there as well but we have support round about this level I'd say about 370 then and it's good strong support there so if you're going in an entry point just now and um, put your stop loss about 365 or something like that it's not financial advice do your own research put big boy pants on big girl pants on and all that stuff um, I like XRP around 17 to 19 cents um, yeah we'll look at XRP just now We'll look at BTC value first because I thought this was going to go down to about two and a half thousand before it went back up again, and it did go down. That was 27th of October, 2,900. So I thought it was going to be coming down around about this level again before going back up, and it still might do, but that's the level I kind of looked um, for for XRP, and still think it might get there. But we'll look at XRP and USD value. <clears throat> 23 and we'll look at the so round about this level 17 cents that's what CDG CDG is saying crypto don one it's a big fall from here but this is obviously with regards to the Bitcoin price if Bitcoin price falls 20% and this doesn't do an XRP doesn't do anything um, the USD value of it's going to go down 20% as well. Um, so, yeah, it could well do, but I expected the Satoshi value to go down, to be honest. Just kind of on the up a wee bit there. That's um, kind of holding it up, or the dollar value would be uh, much lower, obviously. You get a double whammy there. Um, is your neck support on the BTC six um, six thousand four hundred range? I can't see it on the screen. Sorry. Um, no, 
not for BTC, BTC USD. I suppose if you're looking at um, kind of property, so you've got 7,400 as support. I've got 6,000 as support for the next level. And that's a psychological um, kind of barrier there. A psychological support. I wouldn't say 7,000. I know 7,000, the round numbers, kind of 7,000 might be considered as a support. I wouldn't see it as a support. Um, could you say, and I wouldn't say 6,400 there as well. So I would say, I suppose if you went into the proper technicalities of it, you might find some support around about 6,400, 6,500 area. But I'd say the next major support is 6,000 um, after below the 7,400. Um, so it needs to hold that 7,400 line. And we're still going down just now, 7,454. And when I say hold the line, I'm talking about closing on the daily. Um, so it's got a, a while to go before it closes on the daily. But it's bouncing just now off that 6,400 level. So and I wouldn't be saying this is a good time to go long, um, but I wouldn't be saying it's a good time to go short either. So I'll just be kind of holding it just now and just looking at it. Shilling is a person who publicly helps or gives credibility to a person or organisation without disclosing. You have a close relationship with the person or business you disclose, so no shell. Excellent. I love that, Gordy boy. I like that explain. I'm going to save that too. To a person or right, without disclosing, they have a close relationship uh, with the person or business. Ah, right. So, yeah, I bought into it. So, transparent, totally there. Which is always, always, always the best policy because you're always going to get found out. I found that out when I was very young. Um, so I, I never really lie at all. And I certainly wouldn't do it on this. And that's probably part of the problem that I have as well. But it's a good problem to have. Or a good character um, trait to have, I think. Okay, we'll look at some headlines. I've not gone into these too deeply just now because I was looking at other stuff. Um, back launching cash sale Bitcoin futures contracts in Singapore. So on Thursday, November 21st, the Intercontinental Exchange revealed that Bax is prepping to launch Bitcoin to USD settled futures on December the 9th. Don't know how I feel about that, um, to be honest. I liked it when it was um, physically settled, but cash settled, um, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I thought as well. Crypto, De Niro, and cash sale. Your entire premise was BTC settlement. BTC settlement, yeah. Um, complete with virtual settlements, absolute opposite of what you said it would be. You're one um, with CME. Yes, that's kind of how I feel about it as well. I just didn't understand that move. But um, there you go. And I don't think it's going to help the markets, to be honest, with cash settled. Um, Bitcoin to leave bull market. Price closes under $8,000 on the weekly. So if we look at on the weekly, and remember, we've not closed in a weekly yet. And we're looking at these levels for the weekly. So it needs to bounce up and go to here. And they're saying in this article that it's going to leave the bull market. But this is still a bull market. If you're looking at this on a weekly, let's be honest, this is still a bull market. It leaves a bull market when it goes below 3,000, when you get lower lows. Um, so this is definitely still a bull market we're in. So even if it goes down to 6,000, comes down to 5,000 even, we're still in a bull market overall. And we've never left the kind of bull market if we're looking at the bigger picture. It's only when we zoom in on the daily and stuff like that, that you can say, okay, we're in a bear market just now. But at the moment, we're in a bull market just now. I don't understand why people say we're in a bear. We're not in a bear market. We're just in a micro bear market. If you want to look at it that way. Um, that was that kind of news headline. Sorry, I'm jumping quickly here. So I'm just looking at the headlines. Bitcoin on live support as analysis target moves to sub seven thousand. So a lot of people, all these people are going to be coming out of the woodwork and saying, yeah, Peter Schiff is coming out as well and saying, yeah, we're going to go to one thousand dollars and shit like that. Tone Vays is even kind of about turned and saying we're going down to five thousand dollars. Yeah, which we could, we could um, potentially do that. I need to wait and see. But yeah, you're going to get a lot of this just now, which is panicking the market, obviously. Um, Yahoo Finance adds coin markets and crypto prices to its website. 
Um, so Yahoo Finance, United States-based financial news giant, has integrated its website with cryptocurrency pricing by major crypto data supplier CoinMarketCap. And the website now allows visitors to track prices for major cryptocurrency, providing CMC-based data, including market capitalization, trading volume, blah, blah, blah. I think this is a good thing. Uh, and I th the only thing I like about this um, and why I kind of chose this as well is because it's coming into the mainstream. Um, so it's it as, as that hybrid I was talking about, traditional kind of finance, um, with kind of blockchain finance, um, so with DeFi and kind of all stuff like that, I think it's, it's merging together. I think traditional business with blockchain business, we're going to get a hybrid kind of model here as well. So this is one of the reasons I like that, and it's bringing it to the mass as well, um, or potentially to the mass as well. More and more people are going to be checking it out. If it's on Yahoo Finance, I think that can only be a good thing. Um, Fed Chair Powell issues a written response on the US dollar and the digital Currency race, we heard about that the other day, kind of spoke about that um, as well. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has responded to lawmakers who have urged him to consider issuing a digital US dollar. Um, so we need to look at that in more detail. So it's saying the Federal Reserve is not currently developing a US dollar central bank digital currency, CBDC, but continues to carefully evaluate the cost and benefits of issuing a general purpose CBDC defines a new type of Federal Reserve liability that could be held directly by households and businesses. Wouldn't trust that as far as I could throw it, but there you go. Legendary Bitcoin short seller says to watch for base to form before buying. So Mark Dow, legendary Bitcoin shorter, dissuades FOMO buying BTC. Uh, is a global macro trader and author of the, the blog Behavioral Macro. The former US Treasury economist focuses his analysis on technicals. Um, Famously shorted Bitcoin at its 2017 peak. What we've got here, there we go. It just says Bitcoin is dying. That was this tweet there. And where is it? I can't see it there. It just says kind of Bitcoin is dying. He claims that after a massive sell-off, a lot of technical damage has been done that needs to be repaired before a safe entry in a long-term position is possible. The two most important DAOs, um, things DAO says traders and investors need to be aware of is building a base, much like what happened to Bitcoin's 3,000 bottom and overhead resistance. Is he saying it's going to go to 3,000 again? I don't think that's what he's saying. He just says look at the base, where the base is going to be. The base could be 7,400 or it could be 5,000, it could be 6,000. We just don't know yet. 7,444 at the moment. So, is it going to fall below 7,400? It looks a bit, there's a lot of selling pressure on it just now. What else is there? That's that. Oh, yeah, this is um, kind of uptrend. I don't know if you've checked this out. Um, before, but Uptrend, I've just joined Uptrend. I was speaking to, I had a phone call with um, Jimbo, um, CK Alliance. Um, I had a phone call with him the other day and he was kind of telling me about Uptrend. And uh, I kind of joined it and just thinking, okay, I'll just put a couple of things on. And just now Uptrend, but Uptrend actually looks quite good if um, you're looking to kind of put content on. And I'm all about content. When your content marketing is one of the best types of marketing, if you've got a business, any type of business, Content marketing is just amazing for you, and I'm, I'm kind of all for this for cryptocurrency as well, and any type of new platform that comes out. The likes of Steam, Steam is good as well for content marketing, and Uptrend could be good as well. It's Uptrend with a double N, um, so check out Uptrend as well. I've not got a link for you, just um, check out uptrend.com and see what you think of it. Um, but you could be on the ground floor of something that's kind of happening. So I put three videos up just now. Um, well, I didn't. I put the report up for um, the Hidden Gem, which was shared ring. It's had 526 views. Um, I put two videos up so far, and I put today's video up as well. Um, so big shout out to all the Uptrend members as well. Um, so I'm going to be just putting content on there as well. A big, huge believer in content marketing. I think it's the best type of marketing, and it's relatively cheap as well. Okay, so that was the news headlines. Let me know if there's anything you want me to look at. Um, just see what else. Tim Gash, it's interesting time as miners are shutting down again. Um, Litecoin mining difficulty has dropped 44% in the last 90 days. So Tim is a kind of miner himself. You've got mining 
kind of rigs in that setup. So it's interesting to hear that um, from you as well, Tim. Um, G Slick is in the house um, late, just a wee bit late today, but that's okay, mate. And good to see you here. Um, BTC is falling hard there. I'm just watching my money grow. LOL. Yeah, it is falling big time. But it could potentially be this kind of massive cup, inverse cup and handle. Where it goes here, bounces, and then kind of comes up and then goes back down again. So that's the kind of situation where we are just now. So I might get an inverse cup and handle there. So it could bounce from here and go up 7,700 and then come back down again and start going down to 6,000 level, which is where I see the next support. But like kind of um, Crypto Don Juan is saying, you could make a lot of money shorting as well. But you just have to kind of know what you're doing as well and look at the Bybit. I think would be the best platform, or is the best platform for shorting. Um, I wouldn't trust Bitmex um, just now. Key, yes, we we'll looked to Key at the beginning, and um, we're just kind of seeing how it was up. Where is it just now? It's up to 34 at the moment. It's down, back down to 34. But still a lot of buys coming in. Looking at the order books, got 127 million. So it's going to go up to 34, 35 Satoshi at the minute. And it's looking strong on support. So we might get a bounce from here. I don't know what's driving this. Uh, a self key. I don't know if there's news out. I don't know what's kind of driving it just now. But the alts are doing okay. Same on Binance. If we look at um, kind of Binance there. A good few pages in the green at the moment, so still always buying opportunities out there. Some for two nine. We're about to break through again. And about to break through the seven thousand four hundred barrier again. I use crack in ETH one. I've never. I, Kind of at the very beginning, back in 2017, I think I used Kraken once. Or was that another one? I can't remember. But I've never really used it, um, to be honest. I'm just going to see... No, we have to look at the kind of sentiment. I'm just going to have a look at the sentiment on TradingView. TradingView, if you've not joined that, I would I highly recommend you join that if you're kind of trading quite a lot. I would imagine a lot of people are saying Bitcoin is going to go. I'll just get rid of this. This is the overview. And the technicals are saying it's a sell. So if we look at this. Funny enough, it's not saying it's a strong sell. Which um, surprises me. I was just looking, wanting to look at this just to see what the technicals are kind of looking at. But it's not saying a strong sell at the minute. You've got the oscillators. Um, sell, moving averages, strong sell. Which you'd expect, obviously, with the moving averages. Relative strength index. That, that, yeah, that's one good thing that we're like. If we're, so if we look at Bitcoin just now, it is in the oversold territory at the minute. So obviously with MACD, that's crossed down over to 9,200 or something. Um, it should, should have been a sale there. That should have been the signal that we should have sold. And the crossing over of the, the 50 EMA as well. That should have been a signal that we sold as well, which we've kind of spoke about over the last couple of weeks as well. Um, volume is down. It's not a major thing, but the volume is down, obviously, as well. But we're in oversold territory here. And if we kind of look at this, and go here, maximize pain. I'll go to the RSI just now. And if we can do this. I don't know how to get this up on a big screen, and um, we'll just do it RSI here. 
RSI, out of strength index, maximize it. So this is a relative strength index of kind of Bitcoin just now. And you can see here back in November 2018, all-time low of about nine. So we've got a wee bit to go before we get to there. But we'll look on the weekly for the relative strength index. That'll give us more of an indication. So on a weekly, we're kind of sitting around about 42. So we still could go down to around about that 30 level. And usually from there, that is when we bounce. And if we kind of look where we bounce. 30 level was here, around about 3,000 level. We bounced. We just put that on auto just now. And the last level, when we bounced as well, at 30, was at 250. When we bounced from there. And obviously we bounced from here as well at the 30 level. And that was from $3. <laughs> when Bitcoin was $3. So it's still a fair bit to go till we get down to this 30 level again, but it could go down. I would imagine that's around about the $3,000 level. Um, I don't see again to that low, um, but you never know. But it's falling at the moment as we speak. 7,400, just about to break it. It did get down to... 7,320. So, yeah, it's not looking good at the moment, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to leave it there just now um, with that kind of Bitcoin price, but remember there are still trading opportunities out there. However, probably the best thing to do would be to um, kind of walk away from the markets just now. It might be good to walk away and just come back in the beginning of the year um, when everything is a is a bit fresh and more optimistic. So, but I'll still be here if you want to pop in as well. I will be here. Just looking at the RSI on that just now. Yeah, we'll see what happens from here. It needs to bounce from here or we're, we're down to 6,000. Okay, have a brilliant weekend, whatever you're doing. Uh, until next time, namaste. Take care. Bye now. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them.